In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how to treat a range of cells as a collection and use a for each loop to process each cell individually. Let's start by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted and choose to enable any content if requested. The menu worksheet contains a basic drop down list which allows you to select a year and then you can click one of two buttons which will take you to a worksheet containing either hit movies or flop movies. What we'd like to do is loop over the list of films on the worksheet we've landed on and highlight those which were released in the year that we selected on the menu sheet. Let's open the Visual Basic Editor and find the subroutine called Highlight Hits in module number one. The procedure stores the selected year in a variable called Year Chosen, then selects the Hits worksheet and calls another subroutine to clear any existing highlighting. So that just uses the, uh, this basic subroutine to set the color index of all cells back to XL non. We want to loop over a range of cells using a for each loop. And that means we need to have a variable which can hold a reference to a single range object each time the loop is processed. Let's declare a simple range variable then in this subroutine. I'll say dim r as range. Now we can create the for each loop, which uses this variable. Let's give ourselves a blank line below the call to the clear highlighting subroutine and then begin a for each loop by saying for each R in. For a for each loop, which processes a range of cells, you need to reference the range whose individual cells you're interested in. In the hits worksheet, the range of cells we're interested in begins in cell A3 and currently ends in cell A52. If we know that that's a fixed range of cells, we can reference that very simply by saying range A3 to A52. If we weren't sure how big the list was going to be and we can't guarantee that A52 is the last row, what we could do instead is make this code a little more dynamic. We could say for each R in range A3, comma, range A2 dot end XL down. This will find the last cell at the bottom of column A. Assuming there are no gaps in the list, you'll jump from cell A2 down to the last cell and return a reference to that one. To tell the loop to move on to the next cell, we can either just write the word next, or you can optionally include the name of the variable, so next R. Now that we've configured the loop, we can refer to each individual cell in the list using the range variable. The first thing we'd like to do inside the loop is test if the value of the cell to the right of the film's title is equal to the value stored in the year chosen variable. So the film's year of release is listed in the cell directly next door to the film's title. We can reference that by using an if statement to check if r.offset 0,1.value equals year chosen, then Let's add in the end if statement so that we don't forget to do that later on. And then within the if statement, we can write the code which highlights the entire row that we're currently on. So we'd like to highlight everything from the cell referenced by the R variable to the cell that sits at the end of that row. To make that work, we can say range R comma R dot end XL to right, close two sets of parentheses, and then refer to the interior color property. We can make that equal to any color we like. I'll make it a bright yellow color by saying RGB yellow. We can now test that this code works by returning to the Excel worksheet and choosing the menu sheet. Let's select a different year. I'll go for 2015 and then click the highlight hits button. This time we should see that when we land on the highest grossing movies page, we get all the films released in the year we've selected highlighted in yellow. Let's return to the Visual Basic Editor and make one small improvement to this subroutine. Rather than referring to the range of cells we're interested in in the for each statement, we could use a separate variable to hold a reference to the range that we're interested in. Let's declare a new variable at the top of the subroutine. I'm going to call mine film list and its type will also be a range. Before I begin looping, I can then say set film list equal to the same range that I've just used in my for each statement. So I'm going to either cut and paste or copy and paste or just click and drag to move that section of code. 
what I can then do is alter my for each statement to say for each R in film list. Now, of course, this won't make any difference to the end user experience, but it is a slightly more elegant way to write this subroutine. And it also gives you access to the same range of cells later on in the procedure. Should you need to do anything else with film list, you have access to that range via a simple variable rather than what can be quite a complex expression like this.